Mario Prats's Illustrated History of Interior Decoration, the music room of the Brighton Pavilion. You see here one of the most iconic forms um, repopularized by Tony Duquette. These pagodas symmetrically put on both sides of the music room. I'm so excited today to share with you Mario Prats's and Illustri Illustrated History of Interior Decoration. First published in 1964, also known as an Illustrated History of Interior Furnishings or Furnishings. And it is, Mario Prats is an art historian and he's gone through art from Pompeii to Art Nouveau with a focus on the backgrounds of those pieces and a focus on the interiors and on the furnishings in those rooms to try to discover this, the history of interior design. It's the most cited book uh, in the interior design world. And I want to jump right in and uh, share with you some of the most amazing pieces. My name is Sergio Andres with Elegance Found. Thank you for joining me. Uh, the first one I want to start with is the Royal Pavilion um, of Brighton. Uh, it was um, completed in 1821 by John Nash uh, for King George IV. And it was in an era that was fascinated by the exotic. And we still see a lot of uh, cross cultural. Um, use in design techniques but here you see some of the very beginnings of that uh here this is the original design uh or this is the um this was one of the first pieces done in the brighton pavilion which was all about sharing an incredible collection of chinese wallpapers which we still see uh in the design world today but it was really in an era of the details here in the banquet room you have a ceiling that was painted to represent uh banana leaves you had a giant silver dragon that was crafted, and it in its claws it held these chains that then held another chandelier with six other dragons there. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Here's the um, the grand saloon. Here is the music room of the Brighton Pavilion. You see here one of the most iconic uh, forms, you know, um, repopularized by Tony Duquette really kind of a staple of interior design today these pagodas symmetrically put on both sides of the music room and osbert sitwell in 1935 or this was made in 1821 said about this room no verbal description however elaborate can convey to the mind or the imagination of the reader an appropriate idea of the magnificence of this apartment even the creative delineations of the pencil combined with all the illusions of color would scarcely be adequate to such an undertaking. This is a black and white, um, but it's, you know, just to imagine how incredible this room is. And, you know, this room is no longer in the form that it is today. This chimney piece here was designed by Robert Jones, and it's now in the Chinese luncheon room in Buckingham Palace. Uh, so you can go to the, uh, the grounds of the Brighton Pavilion today, but these rooms are no longer the way that they were, but you can still see some of the pieces if you have access uh, to Buckingham Palace. The next piece that I wanna share with you is actually probably the reason why Mario Prats uh, did this book. So he had a friend who was named Don Agostino Chigi uh, in Rome. And um, this man had inherited an incredible album of watercolors of this family, the Wittgenstein family. And they were all the descendants of a man named Peter Wittgenstein, who was a hero, a Russian soldier in the, Napole in, the, in the wars against Napoleon. And he had incredible success and was known as the savior of St. Petersburg. And what's amazing about it is that this very wealthy, not royal, but aristocratic uh, family traveled all through Europe. They traveled through um, they were in Russia, they were in France, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and England, and they chronicled their, um, their, the interiors of all the spaces that they were in. So you see here uh, an interior, and it's really one of the first, uh, in just an intuitive way to study the different periods and the different um, interiors that were found in this class of wealthy and there's there are 30 images and i believe that this is probably one of the reasons why mario Prats felt inclined to write this book and extended it into the great images of interiors the wittgensteins had a focus on comfort this is a watercolor of one of the bathrooms that they were at um 
and you can see here even another bathroom here with these amazing foliage dividers. Um, so an absolutely incredible reason for this book to exist, uh, his friend um, Don Agostino Chigi in Rome. Um, and then I want to focus on one of my favorite sets of uh, watercolors that exist, which are these of the Rothschild Apartments at Chateau de Ferrier. It's an iconic place. It was built in uh, 1857 by James Rothschild, who was the son of the founder of the Rothschild dynasty, uh, Mayor Amschel Rothschild. And he was the founder of the French branch of the Rothschild. It was built in 1857. And um, there was a man named uh, Eugene Lamy, who is probably most famous for his works on, um, on Paris and views of Paris. Uh, which he did uh, in 1845 to uh, 1947 for Fran uh, that were illustrated in France. But um, he became friends with James Rothschild, and he is the one that really had the artistic direction for the Chateau de Ferrier. These watercolors in the book, there's nine images of the watercolors. You'll see these reproduced a lot um, with storytelling about the Rothschilds and about the taste Rothschild, which has influenced um, uh, taste and fashion for so many generations. They, you know, generation after generation, they were incredible tastemakers. And he wasn't an architect. He actually started out with the feelings of the room and the comfort of the rooms. And I wanna focus on this particular room, which is probably the most uh, famous room in Chateau de Ferrier, which is the Great Hall. And this Great Hall, in many of the rooms that were in the Chateau de Verrier are actually connected with this room. But Eugene Lamy did a bunch of things to make it more comfortable and bring it down to scale. The first thing that he did is he divided the room in two. And that was wonderful because not it broke up the scale, but it also gave an opportunity to display the fantastic connect collections of the Rothschild, you know, whether or not they're tapestries or large paintings, in a more suitable and scaled setting. And um, this particular room was a real collaboration between the actual architect, who was named uh, John Paxton, Joseph Paxton. And Joseph Paxton was also known because he had done the Crystal Palace um, for the Great Exhibition of 1851 in Hyde Park. Before that, he'd been the head gardener for the Duke of Devonshire at Chatsworth. But he collaborated on the Chateau de Ferrier here. And this room, and you don't see it in the watercolor, but maybe just a glimpse, and maybe because you see the exquisite light, actually was illuminated by, from above, uh, from the ceiling, because Joseph Paxson, maybe from greenhouses, definitely from his experience with the Crystal Palace, was able to uh, create something very special uh, with this room for the Rothschilds. You know, this was uh, subsequently inherited by uh, Guy de Rothschild, the great-grandson of James Rothschild, the setting of iconic uh, balls of the 20th century, the uh, Proust ball and the uh, Surrealist ball of the 70s. Uh, this book is really an art historian uh, looking at interiors. It is filled with detailed descriptions of hundreds of paintings from hundreds of years and different regions. And it's a really amazing way to see the evolution of style, the geographics of uh, influences of styles, the transitions of styles. And if you're serious about interior design and you're serious about this, um, this study of the history of interior design, or you just want it as an amazing book for inspiration because it covers such a broad gamut, I recommend um, Mario Pratza's An Illustrated History of De Interior Decoration uh, for you. Uh, thank you so much. My name is Sergio Mendo Sergio Andres with Elegance Found. Hope you have a wonderful day.